Hi everyone, Anna here, your tech fairy. In this video, we are diving into multi-threaded magic with p-threads. We'll start with simple integers, and by the end of this video, I'll show you how to pass multiple arguments, including mutex, into a p-thread create function. So let's get started. Let's compile and run the program first to make sure everything is working as intended. We can compile it by typing G++, then we put the name of the program, dash O, and the output name. We should not forget about the thread flag in the end. Okay, compiled successfully. It would have been very embarrassing if it didn't. Let's run it. And our output looks pretty good. We are just sending hello from our threads, nothing complicated. Ready to add our first argument? Let's start with something very easy like integers that we can use to identify our threads. First, let's declare a couple of integers in our main okay. We'll call them id0 and set it to 0, and id1 and set it to 1. Now let's take a look at our pthread create function. Remember that the last null pointer is where we need to pass our arguments. So we'll send the address of our ID numbers as an argument right here. Next, we need to retrieve them in our function. To do this, we'll declare an integer pointer and let's call it TID. We'll use a static has to convert our argument into an integer pointer. So to do that, we put the type we are cast into, which is an integer pointer, and we put it in the angle brackets. The type we put in here should match what we have on the left side. And now in parentheses, we pass the argument that we are trying to convert. Let's add id to our print statement now, and we should not forget to dereference it because we want to print the value, right? All right, let's compile and run it. And no surprises here. The first argument was passed successfully. Nice work. But let's not wrap up just yet. Get it aside, we just getting started. So now we have IDs that we can use to easily identify our threads in our function. But what happens if we want to pass more arguments to the function? pthread query doesn't have any space for additional arguments. So what's the solution? Hmm? Hmm. This is where the structures come to the rescue. By grouping our arguments together in a struct, they can travel together instead of feeling lonely on their own. Let's create a struct to hold our arguments. So first we need to create a struct and give it a name. Um, let's call it thread args. Inside the struct we're creating our first member and it would be an integer for the thread ID. Now we can head over to our main function and create instances of thread args. Since we have two threads, we need two instances, right? Let's call them rx1 and rx2. This will hold thread-specific data for us. Since we already have the thread ID stored in our variables, we can simply assign them to rx1 and rx2. And just like that, our thread-specific data is now neatly organized in a struct. Now remember our old friend pthread create. We are going to use it again, but let's see what we need to change here to make it work with our struct. You see how we were sending addresses of our integers before? Now all we need to do is to send the addresses of our instances, rx1 and rx2. This works because the argument is already appointed to a struct. But if you want to be extra clear, you can use an explicit cast by adding void pointer in front of the rx2 address or in front of the rx1. Doesn't matter whichever way you want. This makes it more explicit, ensuring that argument is treated as a void pointer. But it's not strictly necessary when passing a pointer to a simple type like struct. Now, what about our function? Do we need to make any changes here? Let's take a look. 
We are still passing a void pointer and using static cast to retrieve the integer thread ID. So no surprises here, nothing is changing. Let's go ahead and compile and run our program to make sure everything works fine here. Okay, this looks great to me, but you're watching this video because you want to pass more than just an integer, right? So we need to adjust our function to handle multiple arguments. And while we add it, let's give our threads a little bit of more work. How about making them print an array? That sounds pretty fun. Let's declare a few global variables now. Since we're using two threads, we'll declare num threads and set it to two. Next, we can declare a number of elements and set it to five. This is just a small array to keep things pretty simple. Now we'll initialize our global array numbers with values one, two, three, four, and five. Now let's head over to our function to make sure we can retrieve all the members from our struct, not just the thread ID. See how we are currently using a cast to treat args as an integer pointer? But what we really need is a pointer to our thread arc struct instead. So let's adjust the cast by replacing the right side in the brackets with a pointer to thread args. And remember, with static cast, the type inside the brackets on the right must match the type we are casting to on the left, making this part pretty straightforward. Let's see how it's going to look. We just need to copy what we have in the brackets and give it a name. Let's go with the struct args. Then we can access the thread ID by declaring an int variable. Let's call it TID and assign the thread ID from struct args to it. Now let's create a loopy loop that goes over each element in the array. We'll have each thread print their array values one by one. While we add it, we should also update our print statement to display both the TID or the thread ID and the elements of the array that the thread is processing. And I think that's it for the loop. Now we're ready to compile and run our program again. And there it is. You can see our array being printed by two different threads. Looking good so far. But now. Let's consider something. What if we don't want this array to be a global variable anymore? How do we let our threads access it without using globals? Simple. We can move the array inside of our thread rx struct and pass it along with the thread id and initialize it in main. Let's go ahead and declare the shared numbers array inside the main with the size of number of elements. And for simplicity, Let's set the values again to 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5. After that, we'll loop through each element and copy it into our thread-specific struct. So for each index i, we are saying arcs numbers i equals shared numbers i. And we need to do for arcs2. Easy peasy. What we are doing here is giving each thread its own copy of the data to work with, avoiding any conflicts. Now let's compile and run the program again. What we're expecting to see is each thread printing its own copy of the array. Hmm, there we go. Two arrays printed by two threads, just as we wanted. From here, it should be pretty clear how to add other arguments to our threads. But just in case anyone wants to see more, let's add one more. Um, something extra special to ensure synchronization. Yep, I am talking about our mutex. It's our go-to for keeping everything in perfect harmony. Let's walk through this together, okay? Step one. We add the pointer to the mutex in our struct. We'll use pthread mutex t, and because I love simplicity, we'll call our mutex drum roll, please. We'll call it mutex. <laughs> I think mutex is a great name for a mutex. What do you think? Leave a comment below if you're watching. So, step two as always, 
it is to initialize it in our main. Let's head there now. We'll declare our mutex first and then call pthread mutex init. The first parameter is the address of our mutex and the second is null pointer. And for the last step, we'll assign the mutex to each thread strap. Let's go ahead and do that. That's as simple as saying args one.mutex equals the address of our mutex. And the same goes for args two. This way, all threads can share the same mutex for synchronized access, making sure we don't have chaos with our shared resources. Let's use this mutex in our function. First, we'll lock it with pthread mutex lock, passing in the mutex from our struct. And once we're done with the array, we'll unlock it with pthread mutex unlock. I think we're all set. Let's compile and run it. Now that we got our mutex in place, we should see both arrays printed in the correct order on the very first try. Let's take a look and, and boom, there it is. Everything working like a charm. And just like that, we've passed multiple arguments to our thread, created the struct, added the mutex, and keep everything running smoothly. It's like we built the perfect Sunday of threads magic. If this was as fun for you as it was for me. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Let me know if your threads are behaving or if they're causing chaos in your code. Until next time, this is your tech fairy signing off. Keep coding and may your mutex always lock when you need them to. Bye!